Hello there. Thanks, Jeremy Hunt, for appeasing the markets and the money men and sticking two fingers up at businesses and the rest of us. We know whom it is that you really serve. I never liked that arch remainer to begin with, but he showed his true colours yesterday as his first major address was focused on steadying the markets, pleasing the money men and propping up house prices whilst pulling the rug from underneath the feet of British businesses by making them totally uncompetitive due to tax. And already on Twitter and Getter, Nigel Farage wrote, Jeremy Hunt is now running the country. This is a globalist coup. No brown stuff, well-known Baker Street detective. So if anyone outside of the blue and red cheeks of the same <laughs> intends to win a general election, they had better start their work right now, because we are staring at the prospect, or rather the reality, of a one-party state under Labour. I see no way back for the Tories, so whoever can lead a new popular libertarian-minded party needs to get their skates on, because a general election may be upon us sooner than anyone cares to imagine. And be in no doubt, those calm and reassured markets due to recent actions by Jeremy Hunt means the money men have been reassured that they will be able to continue profiting from the unpayable UK debt. And as an aside, let's not forget Jeremy Hunt wanted even more draconian lockdown rules and was a fan of the Chinese approach, even commending the Chinese state for their approach when his own sister was sealed in her home with a police car outside monitoring her. Um, and uh, I very much agree with uh, the central point in Gabriel's paper that we should be aiming for zero infection um, and elimination of the disease, because that is basically the approach taken in countries which have a SARS strategy as opposed to a, a flu strategy. And those are the countries that have overwhelmingly been the most successful in, in tackling coronavirus. Um, and, uh, you know, I just... My sister uh, lives in Beijing and she flew back to Beijing in the middle of lockdown. And just to give you an, an idea of the contrast, uh, she was escorted from the airport in Beijing to her home by Ministry of Health officials uh, and then uh, put into her home for two weeks quarantine. The door was sealed and uh, she had a police car sitting outside her house uh, periodically. And I'm not saying we go that far in this country, but I just think it's an indication of how serious they are in the countries that have had to deal with SARS about stopping at the root every possible source of infection. How has this despised man gone from party ostracisation to becoming the most powerful politician in the country, with even the Prime Minister under his thumb? All helpfully engineered by globalist Tory MPs. So the plan seems to have been, you either get Rishi Sunak or we force Jeremy Hunt on you. And Liz Trust walked straight into that trap. Slam dunk. And on top of that, Jeremy Hunt has set up a new body of experts to advise him on the economy. The Economic Advisory Council. And this is set up to allow finance industry specialists to feed advice one way, yes, one way, from them to him and his chief economic advisor. Yes, I know Liz Truss promised this, but now we can see what it is. And to give you an idea, it has started with four big advisors, including one from JP Morgan Asset Management and one from BlackRock, feeding advice into the Chancellor. And I'll ask you one question. Would that advice ever include how to make the poor more wealthy at their expense or their company's expense if that was the best thing to do for the cohesion of our society? 
Don't MPs and ministers already have far too many champagne and nibbles events, as well as black tie dinners with the rich and powerful from around the planet? Why not go and have a chat with ordinary people while handing out parcels at a food bank instead? And on top of that, in the T's and C's for that committee, it talks about the Treasury not being allowed to pass on any market-sensitive data to those advisers. Those advisers and their companies probably already know all the market-sensitive data that they need to know, especially if they have MPs or former ministers on the books somewhere. Oh, and I see no mention of minutes being published for those meetings. Anyway, the EU Economy Commissioner, Paolo Gentiloni, had a very strange reaction to the Hunt appointment. First, best wishes to Jeremy Hunt. Uh, second, we don't have lessons to, to give to anyone and mm. to UK. Uh, we have lessons to learn, perhaps, uh, because what happened show how volatile is the situation and so how uh, prudent we should be also with our fiscal and monetary mix. Welcome and no lessons for the UK. Now there's a new approach for the EU. Looks like Hunt and the Eurocrats are going to get on like a house on fire. So you can imagine the red carpet and the flowing of champers in Brussels if Keir Starmer got into number 10, can't you? Now it's been claimed recently that governments can no longer control markets. So I'll put a seed of thought out there. If the UK had been running a surplus instead of a deficit and had built up a national savings account instead of a massive debt, would the market still have this insidious control over us? Has our yearning for free stuff on the government, or should I say taxpayer, as well as politicians' well-known fondness of spending other people's money or getting into debt, got us here? right into the globalist pocket. Anyway, I see that someone's getting the applause for putting the final brick into Globalist UK. <laughs> now she can go back to number 10, sit down with some popcorn and catch up on Netflix. Nothing else for her to do now, is there? And now we get to the vexed matter of the plush red carpet adorning the English Channel at the moment. Take it away, Richard. Thank you, Jeff, and good evening. And firstly, I would like to give a warm welcome to everyone who entered the country today by small boat. We love you. No, no, we really do. Otherwise, we would have asked you a few questions when you arrived here without your passports and claiming that you were seven years old and had a hereditary condition that made you grow to six feet tall and grow a beard so early on in your young life. Yes, but don't worry. A five-star country mansion and your own personal on-call doctor is awaiting you with every luxury your average Brit could only dream of. Leaving the persecution you faced in an EU nation such as France must have been so awful, so welcome to our shores. And please ignore the uh, cries of the army veterans sleeping on the streets with PTSD. We haven't worked out what to do with them yet, but I suspect they will be shipped off to Rwanda soon to make way for you and more of your friends. And I, for one, intensely dislike it when you are accused of being part of criminal gangs. Don't these ignorant people know that it's more of a wealth distribution union? And those of our population that sit on the left love unions, so we expect the Labour Party will be seeking policy advice from your friends very soon. And as for our laws and culture, well, if you break the law, you're probably going to be okay, I think. But that depends on what racial and religious demographic you come from. So I don't think you've got anything to worry about there. Welcome to the UK. Back over to Jeff. Thank you for that, Richard. And finally, when subscribing, please don't forget to press that little bell and also select the all option, or you won't get any notifications when I publish a new video. And thank you all so much for taking the time to watch the show.